In this video, we're going to discuss dilution. Now, dilution is adding solvent to a solution in order to lower the concentration of that solution, right? In the previous video, we talked about how we can quantify the concentration of a solution using the molarity. And so we introduced the following equation. So we had the molarity was equal to the number of moles of your, sol of your solute, which I'm gonna use the lowercase n to denote the number of moles of the solute. And that was over the liters of the solution, which I'm gonna use volume V to denote the, the total volume of the solution in liters, right? So we introduced this equation. So if you add more solvent, right? Let's say you add more solvent to a solution, you're gonna be increasing this denominator, right? You're increasing the total volume of the solution. And so we know that if we increase this number in the denominator, this molarity is going to go down. So you end up with a lower concentration. So adding more solvent or diluting a solution is always going to result in a lower concentration, right? And you can see um, a diagram that represents this process of dilution here, right? So you have before you have a lower volume uh, looking at the looking at the cylinder. It looks like it's about. 50 milliliters of water, right? Um, and so you can see it has a more intense color. And here, what they're uh, what the figure is showing is uh, these red triangles as solute molecules and the clear circles as solvent molecules. You can see there's a, a large concentration of the solute molecules. Then as you add more solvent, right? So it looks like they've added about 100 milliliters here or close to 100 milliliters um, of solvent here to the solution. And so that dilutes the solution. You end up with a paler color, right? A less intense color. And on a molecular level, you end up with less solute molecules in the solution, right? So you end up with more of these solvent molecules that's going to dilute the concentration of this solution. One key thing to note here is that you're adding more solvent, right? but you're not changing the amount of solute, right? The amount of the solute is going to be the exact same. The only thing that's changing is the amount of the solvent, right? So really the number of moles of the solute before dilution is equal to the number of moles of the solute after dilution, right? So the number of moles don't change, right? So even before and after, right? So let's, let's kind of look at these two scenarios, right? So you'll have what's happening before the dilution, right? Before the dilution, you're gonna have some initial concentration M1, right? You have N, which is your number of solute molecule, or your, your number of moles of solute, which is not changing. And you have some initial volume, V1, right? Now, if we look at what happens after dilution, right? After the dilution, you end up with some final concentration, M2. And the number of moles of the solute still doesn't change, right? So that's still N. And some final volume, V2, right? What we can do here is do a little bit of algebra with both of these expressions and solve for N, right? If we solve for N for the before uh, concentration, right? We'll have N is equal to M1 times V1, right? Similarly, if we solve for N after, then N is going to be equal to M2 times V2, right? Now, again, N is going to be the same in both, right? You have the number of moles of the solute is not changing. So that means that we can actually set these two equations equal to each other. So we can actually say that M1 times V1 is going to be equal to M2 times V2, right? This is called the dilution equation, right? This is the dilution equation, right? And think about where this comes from. So we went through somewhat of a derivation of this showing that the, since the number of moles of the solute is not changing, 
uh, before, after the, the dilution, right? Because all you're doing is just adding solvent, right? The number of moles of your solute's not changing at all. So you can just solve for N in both cases. They should be equal to the exact same number. So that means you can set those equations equal to each other. So we end up with M1V1 being equal to M2V2 with you know one being before the dilution and two being after the dilution. So what can we do with this equation? So let's, let's look at an example of a type of utility that this equation might serve. Right, so let's say you have some initial uh, concentration of your solution. Let's say you have a five molar solution and it's at an initial volume of 0 0.5 liters, right? So we got a half a liter solution that has five molar concentration, right? Now let's say that you want to dilute this solution to 2.5 molar. Right, let's say you want to cut it in half. And this is actually a very common thing. So dilution is really important because, you know, oftentimes in chemistry labs, things are bought in stock solutions. And these stock solutions are usually really concentrated. And what you would do as a chemist, you just take what you need and add water to it to make the solution that you want, right? So you might have a stock solution of HCl that might be one molar, really concentrated and you want to dilute it to like 0.1 mole solution. And that you'll take from the stock solution that's really concentrated and you'll dilute it, right? So this is actually a very common practice. You wanna dilute a solution by half and you wanna know what, how much water do I need to add to this solution in order to get this concentration? So the question you wanna ask is how much water should I add, right? Let's say you're trying to do some reaction. You know that this reaction needs a 2.5 molar solution, but your stock solution is really concentrated at five molar. So you want to know how much water do I need to add to this stuff um, in order to make a 2.5 molar solution. And that's where the dilution equation can come in handy, right? So we have M1V1 is equal to m 2 B2, right? So all we want to do, we want to solve for the final volume. We have our initial and uh, initial concentration and volume. This guy is going to be our M2, right? This is the concentration that we want after dilution. So what we need to solve for here is our final volume. So if we do the algebra here, V2 is going to be equal to M1 V1 over M2. Right, so all this stuff we have, right? So we have the um, initial concentration is 5.0 molar times the initial volume, which is 0 0.5 liters over the final uh, concentration that we want, which is 2.5 molar, right? So when you set this up, you can see that uh, the, mol the molars cancel out, right? The molarity, these guys cancel out. And so you're left with liters as your final unit, which is what you want since you're solving for a volume. So in this case, V2 is gonna be equal to 1.0 liters when you do the math there, right? So that means your final solution needs to be one liter in order to achieve a 2.5 molar solution. So that means you're going to have to add another half liter of water to your 0.5 liter uh, concentration in order to achieve that one liter solution, right? So dilution is a really common uh, practice in chemistry. Like I said, it's really common to have something at a, to buy stuff in bulk at a really high concentration and then just take what you need to make the diluted solution that you need to use. So it's a really common technique. Um, and it leads to this equation, right, where you can easily solve for your diluted concentration or the volume you'll need to make your diluted solution.